So is the recording interface on the Insta 361R any better than it was for the One X? I got your back. Greetings and salutations, I am Skojo in 360. Gonna do a quick video that's specifically about the app's recording interface. This is not going to be about editing in the app or anything like that. I just had a lot of requests that said, is it an upgrade at all as far as recording and stuff? Because if you had the old app for the One X, you knew it was pretty difficult to use because the print was so small, there wasn't a whole lot you could do with it. It was kind of annoying. So I'm just gonna break down just the recording interface. I have just shot some footage out in a blizzard that I will be editing on the app and doing a full tutorial on that coming up very, very soon. But for now, let's address the recording interface. Just like the old camera, of course, you had to join with the Wi-Fi and then click on the camera in order to enable it. And it connects, you know, fairly quickly, but it does have to search for the camera. Be patient in this framework. Now you get a lineup that's a little bit more impressive than the last one. As you can see, it's spread out. There are more options to choose from on the thing, but you can also see that the print is still pretty small, but you do have access to your HDR video. You've got access to an auto setting for white balance within HDR video, which is awesome. You've got your time-lapse functions that also has an interval, also has exposure. It also has auto white balance, or you can manually set it. So you get a lot of selections within each of these things and also both Bullet time. Now I've heard there's an improvement on bullet time. I can't wait to try it out. But again, bullet time even comes with exposure settings. It comes with uh, white balancing. So a lot of stuff you can do within everything. My frame rates, still decent, but you know, you still don't get that many and they're still the same as the old camera. So nothing much new there. Now the exposure setting is pretty cool because, you know, if it's very bright, you want to turn down the exposure. Boom, it gets a little bit darker. Uh, if you want to, you know, switch it around and things are very dark where you are, then you want to bring the exposure up. Now be prepared, that will create some noise in your video, but it's nice to have at your fingertips. Also, the white balance settings. The larger number you choose, the warmer it's going to get. These are temperatures, 400K or 4000K, 5000K. And again, the lower you go, the more towards sort of blue it will go, and the higher you go, the more towards a warm color. There was this little running man icon. I still haven't figured out exactly what it is. I assume it must have something to do with tracking motion, but oh well. When you toggle the little button in the lower right, it gives you your selections or takes them away. And now we'll go into photo section. This is fairly impressive too. Now again, the print is pretty small, but you get a lot of different functionality within all of them, including timer, white balance, exposure, you got your interval recording, and that's gonna be a new function that I have yet to see. I can't wait to see exactly how this thing's gonna play out. I've seen some clips of it, looks pretty sweet. And again, you've got a lot of selections within all this stuff, including RAW. You do have a chance to have a RAW file in your photos. The delays you can set up to about two minutes. That's a, at least as good as the last app. And then you've got ISO priority, shutter priority, manual settings. A lot of these you don't necessarily need to know about, but they are at least good to know that they are there. And again, all these things come with exposure, white balance, all that fun stuff. So a lot more accessible at your fingertips than the previous One X app. Oh, and finally, please excuse the out of focusness here, but if you click the icon in the upper right, it gives you GPS, it gives you a histogram, and it also gives you the uh, grid, which is kind of nice. The, the histogram, you can't really see it working right there because there's not a lot of light differences, but it's good for gauging where it might be too light or too dark. And then of course the GPS, I did not set that up. It's not something I'm particularly interested in, but it does give you some extra functionality when you hit that icon in the upper right. Okay, so that's the quick and dirty again, just on the recording interface. Is it better than the previous one? Yes, is it great? No, they really need to make the print on these things bigger and easier to read because once you get out in the sunlight or if there's a light portion of your video, you can't see some of the words because they're in white and if it's bright, yada, you get the picture. So not a huge improvement, I am just about to dig into the app with some stuff I shot out in a blizzard yesterday, so I will be coming out with in-depth stuff about the app. Stay tuned. That is all for this edition of the podcast. Please be sure and hit subscribe, like it, share it with your friends, and ring the bell on the side because, let's face it, I love you. I am Skojo in 360. Please, dance with me out.